channel. If you're new here, welcome. So today I'm so excited to be showing you how you can achieve this aqua makeup look and also how you can style and color her wig as well. Now aqua is actually the first character I'm going to be doing in a special effects trilogy inspired by Kingdom Hearts in honor of the release of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now I'm actually recording this after I already recorded the next two videos that you guys are going to see and I filmed those before I got to play Kingdom Hearts 3 and this is after Kingdom Hearts 3 and no spoilers but can I just say I'm emotional. And for those of you who don't know, Kingdom Hearts 3 is a video game developed by Square Enix, Disney, and now Pixar that we have been waiting over a decade for. I mean, to put it in perspective for you guys, I'm 20 years old. I have been waiting over half of my life for this game to come out. It was a big monumental moment for my older brother and I to literally take the weekend, do absolutely nothing except play through this game. And the reason for that is because my older brother and I literally played Kingdom Hearts together growing up, and that is basically how we bonded. I mean, we were always close, but this is definitely something that we really became close over and just waiting for the release date to come out and just speculating things that could happen. It definitely made our bond even stronger. And so it was really nice to be able to have the weekend and play through it and just really kind of feel like a kid again and kind of be able to enjoy that time together that we're probably really not ever going to get to do again. And the other thing that needs to be mentioned is the music in the video game is beyond anything I've heard. It is so nostalgic. If you want to make me cry in five seconds, just play any song from the Kingdom Hearts soundtrack and I will most likely start tearing up. So anyways, with that little bit of explaining done, I'm going to be jumping into the tutorial where I'm showing you how you can achieve Aqua's makeup, which also can pass for any other Kingdom Hearts character makeup, like for example, Kairi. This is relatively similar to how you would probably do her makeup. Shion, Naminé, they're all pretty similar. They have very similar facial structures, so that's another tip. I'm also going to be showing you how you can body paint her clothes on, and if you're cosplaying her, you're most likely not going to do this. You're going to have a costume, but for those of you who maybe just want to take a cute picture or you can't afford a costume at the moment, this is a great way to just kind of, you know, see how it's going to look. And last but not least, I'm also going to be showing you how you can style and color her wig, and this is really great to apply to any wig that you might be wanting to style or color because what it really comes down to is teasing and colored hairspray. So anyways, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, so to get started, we are going to be working on Aqua's wig, and I absolutely love how this turned out. It is so bright and vivid, and definitely has a gorgeous ombre that I'm going to be showing you guys how you can achieve. So to start off, I'm going to be taking this light blue Aqua wig from Arta Wigs, which I will have linked down below for you guys, and I'm just going to be carefully and gently brushing through the hair with a comb. Once that is done, I'm then going to be creating my part and just pinning it to the side so that it doesn't get in the way while I am styling it. And so I re definitely recommend doing this just so you can kind of get an idea of where the hair is going to lay. And you want to kind of start to train the hair to naturally lay in that direction because it is used to just kind of falling wherever. If you just take the hair at the root and pull it straight in the opposite direction where you want it to go, it should lay there quite nicely. Now, since this wig was pretty much the exact style I wanted, I was just kind of giving it a little bit more life and volume. So in order to do that, I'm going to be taking tiny pieces of hair and then lightly teasing them so that they stick up straight and just have some more volume to them. And this really just helps accentuate all of the layers in this wig because this wig is absolutely gorgeous, especially for Aqua. I feel like it is very accurate. Now you're more than welcome to cut the wig if you'd like. I personally didn't see the need to do that, but if you really want to be accurate, you might definitely want to take a few places and just cut them off. Now, I'm also going to be creating a few spikes in her hair since she definitely seems to have that going on. So I'm going to be doing this by taking tiny pieces of hair, taking my got to be glued hairspray, which is amazing for cosplay hair. I'm just going to be pinching it at the end and hairspraying it so we get these nice soft triangles. If you do want more of a spiky Sora kind of look, I do have this got to be glued gel that I highly recommend if you really want that intense point. But once again, I did want this to be a little bit of a softer hairstyle. I didn't want everything to be sectioned out and I love how this turned out because I feel like it was a little bit more realistic because I feel like if you were to see Aqua in real life it wouldn't be so spiky as it would just have some nice definition of the triangular shapes. And then I'm also going to be making sure to spray her bangs in place so that they don't move because if you're going to be at a convention all day or you're doing this just for fun, you don't want your bangs to be falling in your face. So feel free to go crazy with this and definitely touch up throughout the day just to make sure that it's going to stay put and after a few times it shouldn't move at all. 
Next, we're going to be moving on to our first layer of colored hairspray. I'm going to be taking my L'Oreal Colorista spray in blue 300 and just spraying this onto the roots before then going into my L'Oreal Colorista spray in pastel blue 30 and spraying that on over top simply because even though this is what you would think would be a lighter color, it actually applies darker when applied on top of the teal color. Our next layer is going to be our Good Mark Temporary Hair Color in blue, and I got this from Walmart, and I'm just going to be spraying this at the roots as well. This is really going to help give that dark ombre look and kind of let everything bleed and blend together. I did go back and forth between some of my other hairsprays just to kind of help this all blend. And something to keep in mind, I did style this before spraying it, and this was because I actually wanted there to be a few pieces of the light natural aqua color from the base part of the wig to peek through at times. But if you do want this to be a full-on ombre with no color showing underneath, I would definitely recommend taking this layer by layer, but I didn't have that much hairspray to work with, so only doing the top layer worked for me, but you might prefer to go layer by layer in the wefts of the wig. So as you can see, I'm just slowly working my way down to the ends of the wig. I want to keep those mostly like the base color, but I do want there to be a light cast of some blue tones going on on top of that, just so it all blends together and that there aren't any harsh lines. So you just definitely want to take this whole process very slowly and just fill in the gaps that you feel like might need a little bit more of a darker blue or a little bit more of some shadows. But the great thing about having a lighter aqua wig underneath all of this is that if those do happen to move a little bit, they can serve as highlights in the wig. So this is where I originally stopped coloring my wig and you are more than welcome to stop here as well. I feel like the blues are very vibrant, they blend together nicely, but I did realize once putting it on that there were a few more steps I wanted to take. So I did end up adding a little bit more hairspray to the bangs just to make sure that they would stay in place and I wanted to add a shadow root. So in order to do this, I took some black hairspray from Spirit Halloween and just lightly applied that to the root of the hair. This was definitely easier to do on so I could get a better idea of where exactly I wanted it to be and how much I wanted to add because it's easier to apply it on, believe it or not, because then you can really tell where you want it to stop as opposed to doing it on a styrofoam head. You can easily go overboard and have way too much black and unfortunately you can't go back from that. And another great tip is to take some black eyeshadow on either your finger or a brush and just apply that onto the root of the hair to avoid having overspray from the hairspray. This just really lets you get into those hard to reach places. And that is the final and completed aqua wig tutorial. I absolutely, once again, love how this turned out. But now that that is finished, we can finally move on to the makeup. To start off, I'm going to be taking my Boca Bunny Beauty French Benefit Primer and applying this all over my face before moving on to foundation, where I'm actually going to be mixing a little bit of my primer with my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea foundation in light neutral and applying this all over my face. The reason I am mixing this with my primer is so that I can have a little bit more of a natural finish as opposed to something that is going to be more full coverage. Next, I will be taking my Boca Bunny Beauty Cream to Powder Foundation in Mocha and using this to contour my face. So I'm going to be applying this under my cheekbones, my jawline, my neck, my nose, and my forehead as well before blending all of that out. Next, I'm going to be highlighting my face by taking my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in number 14 and applying this to the areas that we now want to brighten in case contour got in the way of this. So this is going to be under my eyes, my forehead, and my nose as well. I'm then going to be setting this with my Airspun Translucent Powder, and I'm actually going to be using the powder puff that it comes with to really help make this look as soft and smooth as possible. Next, we're moving on to eyebrows, where I'm going to be taking my Morphe James Charles eyeshadow palette, taking this aqua blue eyeshadow, and using this to outline the eyebrow. Something important to keep in mind is she does have very thin, small eyebrows, so I'm actually going to be ignoring the tail of my eyebrow. You are more than welcome to glue this down, but I'm just going to ignore it and kind of cover it up with concealer later. And to help with this illusion, I'm going to be going into this darker blue eyeshadow from the palette and applying this to the straight part of our tail before it angles down in the arch. I'm then going to be taking my NYX Color Mascara in blue and actually applying that onto an angled brush and almost use that as a pomade on the straight part of my brow before sweeping that through the eyebrow hairs as well. And a great trick to help make this look like your eyebrows are more chiseled and small, I'm going to be going into my concealer and applying that right under the eyebrow and also right on top as well. This is really going to help define the brow shape. And like I said before, I'm going to be applying a little bit of concealer onto the tail of the brow before setting that with some powder and doing about two to three more layers of that, not really trying to fully cover the brow, but just to help kind of conceal it a little bit so it's not quite as obvious. 
I mean, the hair mostly covers it anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but it's, it's just me trying to help make it look a little bit more accurate. And last but not least, I'm going to be taking my Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel and just sweeping this through my brow hairs, and this stuff is amazing. Your brows literally won't move all day. I'm then going to be taking my Smashbox 24 hour photo finish primer and priming my eyelids so we can move on to eyeshadow. I'm then going to be taking my Morphe James Charles palette, taking this nude eyeshadow and just applying this all over my lid. I'm then going to be taking this white eyeshadow from the palette and applying this onto my brow bone and then following it up by applying this onto my eyelid as well. I'm then going to be taking this taupe eyeshadow and applying this on the inner corner of the lower part of the brow bone just so we can really kind of help add some more nose definition and also following that on to the outer crease as well before going into this light pink eyeshadow and just using this to blend that all together. I'm then going to be going back into my taupe eyeshadow and mixing it with some of this dark brown and applying this onto the inner corner of the eye once again just to help deepen that up before going in and mixing these highlight colors and just applying that to the eyelid to help add a little bit more shine and help open up the eyes a little bit more. I'm then going to be going into just the dark brown and applying that to the inner corner of the eye once again to just keep deepening that up until I got the desired depth that I was looking for. Next, I'm going back into my white eyeshadow and applying that to my lower lash line to get a nice base color before going in for a second layer and using padding motions to really help build up that intensity. I'm then going back into the taupe eyeshadow and applying this to the outer corner of the lower lash line and also going in with a little bit of the dark brown as well and just adding a tiny bit on the outer half of the lower lash line. I'm then going to be going back to my face by taking my Too Faced Cocoa Contour Palette, taking medium and dark cocoa, and using this to deepen up the contour from earlier and just kind of help set it as well. I'm then going to be taking my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer and just bronzing up my face a little bit before moving on to my Physician's Formula Butter Blush in Plum Rose and just applying that onto the contour areas as well to help add a little bit more color to my cheeks. Moving back up to the eyes for a little bit, I'm going to be taking my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk and applying that to my lower waterline before going back into the dark brown eyeshadow on a smaller brush and just really intensify the outer corner of the lower lash line and even blend that up into the upper crease a little bit as well. And then of course, I'm just going to make sure to blend this out as I go so I don't have any harsh lines. For my blush, I'm going to be taking my Buckle Bunny Beauty Honey Bunny Blush and just applying that to my cheeks to add a little bit more color and this is perfect for aqua because it's nice and subtle and not too intense. I'm then going into my NYX Epic Ink Liner and creating a nice thin line on my upper lash line to really help intensify the lash line and almost make our lashes look a little bit thicker. And then after that, I'm going to be going into my Morphe James Charles palette again, taking the black eyeshadow and once again, going to the bottom lash line and finally intensifying that bottom lash line. And this really kind of helped seal the deal. For my highlight, I'm taking my BH Cosmetics Spotlight Highlight Palette, taking Vivid, and just applying this to my nose to really kind of help highlight that and give it a nice glow before moving on to my cheekbones as well. This was a really perfect color, and I actually kind of fell in love with it, and I'm kind of using it every day now. For my lips, I'm using my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in Deep, and I'm slightly underlining my lips. I'm not going to the full extent of my lips or overlining them in any way, because anime characters and video game characters seem to always have a little bit of smaller lips. So the next products I'm using for my lips, I actually ended up blending these three together and using a lip brush to apply them, and it looked absolutely perfect. So the ones I used are my ColourPop Liquid Lipstick in Echo Park, my Tardiest Lip Paint in Front Row, and my Sephora Liquid Lipstick in number 23. Now, if you would like just one lip product, I would probably recommend the ColourPop Libby Sticks in Aquarius. I feel like that would look gorgeous for Aqua. I just had a little bit more fun making my own color for her. Next, I'm going to be prepping my eyelashes by curling them before moving on to mascara where I'm going to be taking my Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara and just sweeping this through my eyelashes to really help accentuate them and add more volume before we add fake lashes on top. The lashes I used for Aqua are my Sephora Hipster Lashes, which looked absolutely perfect. I can't imagine a better lash for her and I just fell in love with these. I feel like they are so gorgeous and definitely fit her character very well. Now that we're done with the face makeup, we can finally move on to the body paint. I'm going to start off by taking my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk and just outlining her outfit just so I can kind of get an idea of where everything is going to go. I definitely always recommend having reference photos because this just makes the whole process a thousand times easier. I have 
have everything mapped out, I'm going to be going into my Marilyn Paradise paint in black, and using this, I'm going to be outlining the outer portion of the outfit where she actually has a dark rim. So I'm going to be avoiding the areas where she has the belt across her chest and just applying this on the areas where it is the under layer of clothing and also applying this on the neck piece as well. I'm then going to be going into my Graftobian Pro Paint in Catalina Blue and mixing that with some of my Graftobian Pro Paint in Graveyard Gray so I can get this nice dusty blue and just apply that to her under layer of clothing, which is going to be fine if that happens to blend into the black a little bit, seeming that there happens to be shadows going from the black to the blue. And I ended up doing about two layers of this body paint just because it ended up thinning out a little bit the more I applied it. And so I definitely wanted it to be a little bit more opaque and actually look like clothing. So I would definitely recommend doing a second layer when applying this body paint. I'm taking my Graftobian Pro Paint in Tickled Pink and mixing that with some of my Graftobian Pro Paint in Wild Violet. And I'm actually just going to be creating a nice plummy pink that I'm going to be applying on the upper part of the belt and lightly blending it in towards about the middle section of the belt before going into just my Graftobian Pro Paint in Tickled Pink and using that to apply pink to the rest of the belt. This just kind of helps to add a natural shadow so that it looks a little bit more realistic. Following that, I'm going to be going back into my Graftobian Pro Paint in Tickled Pink and mixing that with a little bit of my Graftobian Pro Paint in White Swan so we can get a nice light pink color that we're going to be using for the ridges of the belt. This is going to be really nice because then the purple is actually going to kind of help intensify that and add a natural shadow to the ridge so that actually looks like the part of the belt is actually sewn in. Next, I'm going to be taking my Graftopian Pro Paint in Graveyard Gray and just filling in our little heart chest piece that we have in the center of the outfit before going into my Marilyn Paradise Paint in Black and using this to kind of help intensify some of the details inside of the chest piece, like the little angles and shadows that it has. Once again, I'm going to be mixing some of my Graftobian Pro Paint in White Swan with my Graftobian Pro Paint in Tickled Pink and applying this to the very center of the belts that she has going on her shoulders. This is going to add a nice highlight to the center of it. Following that, I'm going to be going back into my James Charles palette, taking the black eyeshadow and using this to create shadows in her outfit. This is very important. This is really going to help make this look more three-dimensional and lifelike. So anytime that there's going to be an overlap in a costume piece, you definitely want to add a shadow around that. And you definitely want to add a shadow around the perimeter of the costume pieces to really help differentiate the layers that you have going on in your outfit. Next, I'm going back into my BH Cosmetics Highlight Palette, taking Vivid and using this to highlight my shoulders just to kind of help add a little bit more glow before going into this taupe eyeshadow and using this to outline the outside of my costume pieces to once again make this look like it is sitting on top of your skin. I'm then going to be taking my white eyeshadow and applying this to a few areas on the costume itself to add a few highlights and also going back into the black eyeshadow and very lightly applying that on the outer portion of the costume pieces as well to really help make that look like it is sitting on top of your skin and that it is actually a costume piece. But you wanna go very light with this. This is mostly just to help add that natural shadow that it would have. You don't want this to be too intense like you would do for the costuming. And that is the completed look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see next. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos, especially the next two Kingdom Hearts themed videos that I have coming out later this week. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And with all of that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.